Welcome to Drinking Bros, presented by GhostBed.com. Welcome to Drinking Bros. Sometimes, sometimes, some of our listeners listen to other podcasts, Anthony. Not just Drinking Bros, not just things on our network. One show that people love in particular is called Order of Man with Ryan Mickler, mm-hmm. who is here today. Ryan, how are you? What's up, guys? It's good to see you. Thanks for having me on the podcast today. It's sure. good to be seen, Ryan. It's good to be seen. Um, look, we're big fans of your show. Um, you, you talk about masculinity, uh, regaining your manhood a lot on your show. And that's also a big theme on our show as well. What made you start this show in particular? Uh, selfish reasons. That's it, man. Like I, I want, I wanted to improve myself. I wanted to get better. I wanted to, to be a more effective father and husband. I had a, a failing financial planning practice at the time. I wanted to grow that thing. And I wanted to have conversations with good men. And I thought there's no reason these guys would want to have a conversation with me unless I put together a podcast and made these conversations available. So I initially started it for selfish reasons, one-to-one calls with some great guys and it, uh, it took off from there, man, which is a testament to the fact that men want this information just like you're talking about. We want to learn how to step up. So it's, it's been a good place to, uh, to grow for myself, but also to help other men do the same. Yeah, and what I love about podcasting in particular is every day I wake up, I get to talk to interesting people from all walks of life that I would never normally get to talk to in my daily life. Um, right. Uh, I, I love it. Look, I'm on every day sometimes two and three times a day just because I enjoy it. And I feel like if nothing, I've, I've left with some tidbit of information or, or something I've learned from somebody else that I can use in my daily life, hopefully. Now, we've had some porn stars on the show and uh, I haven't really learned a lot from them, but, uh, but I gained... I mean, look, there's, I gained a lot there's of lessons everywhere, right? <laughs> you just got to look for it, be open-minded to it, and you'll find it. <laughs> you know what my biggest lesson is about porn stars? Um, they don't really look like they do in the videos in real life. I haven't met one that looks like the video that I, I have you ever met an to. Instagram model in real life. Yes. There you go. There was, there was one that I was like, Oh yeah. And yep. One, only one. The internet is a hell of a drug. Yeah, and it, it is, man. You got all the, like, think about all these filters and everything. I mean, look at your studio, look at my studio. Like, is this what it looks like in real life? It probably looks a little different. You know, we've got the one little place that's staged or whatever else and everything else is a mess and chaotic and just doesn't quite look the same. Yeah. So, right off screen. I mean, we there's all, a bunch of people it up a little bit right off screen. There's a bunch of people crying and shitting their pants right now. Yeah. But yeah, that's yeah, mostly yeah. to keep us motivated. Right, right. I don't want, I don't want to be somebody who's crying and shitting my pants all the time. And I keep one around all the time. <laughs> sure, sure. It's like sure. putting a head on a spike. It's I don't want to be that guy right there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah definitely don't like want to be that guy right there. Yeah, no, it's, it's true. Um, we, I look, we have a, a decent set here. Um, mm-hmm. that's pretty nice, but, uh, but you're right. There's shit all over There's like barbecue sauce and, uh, just a bunch of dude shit where you're like, all right, cool, man. Maybe I'll do something with that in the future and uh, we'll see what happens. We'll see yes. what happens. Who's the best <laughs> guest you've ever had on? Oh, it's a tough question. I've had a man. You know, the, the interview I did with Goggins years ago was amazing. I got to sit down with him in, in Vegas face to face and that was awesome. Oh, did you sit down uh, with him or did you guys run parallel with somebody filming? Yeah. Dude, it was, it was funny. No, he had just got back from a workout so he had all his workout garb and he was sweaty and everything else and so he sat down and we did an interview and after we were done he's like hey man i don't want to rush but are we all done here i'm about to go work out and i'm like didn't you just work out he's like well yeah i mean that was like my, my third workout of the day i'm on my right. fourth or whatever yeah my, at that point. The, the easy question that comes to close. mind for me right there is what are you running from yeah yeah what are you running from what kind of secrets there's do you no, have? there's no reason to be running like that <laughs> ever i've i've been uh, uh yeah Nope. I, I'm, look, I mean, kind of. Here's what I've heard a friend of mine say: is is we're all either running towards something or away from something, and as long as you harness it for productivity, then all the more power to you. So, that sounds. Yeah, that, I mean, that, David Goggins has some demons, man. Yeah, he must, right? Like, He's, no doubt, he talked about them. Yeah, yeah, he. I mean, look, he was a fat JTAC for a while, right? Yeah. And then he got himself in shape and became a SEAL. Yeah. I mean, it's a good, it's an interesting success story, and a lot of people are. A lot of people that have those same, it's, demons is kind of a negative way to characterize it. Jordan Peterson talks about this shit all the time. Like we, uh, the suffering that is intrinsic to life 
has to be met with some kind of genuine purpose. Otherwise you will lose your fucking mind. Right? Like there, there's gotta be some purpose to all this, some kind of cosmic drama that plays out over time, whatever it happens to be. Some people choose religion. Some people dedicate themselves to their family or a cause. Some people dedicate themselves to bettering themselves or whatever it is. Right. But if there's not some purpose to get out of bed every morning, you're probably going to wake up, pissed the fuck off every day. Right. Yeah. I Life just, is fucking brutal. Especially it, it when you is. start getting older and everything hurts. You're like, God damn it, dude. I, yeah, I just, no doubt. I don't know what the purpose is of like suffering and all that other shit through things where there's, there's a lot of things you go through where you're like, this is the dumbest shit in the world. Why the fuck is well, this Well, that's why I tune right out. But it's, you know, that's all it's, it's, and Goggins will tell you this too. It's all very individual. And Jocko will say the same. As intense as those two dudes are, they know that their brand isn't for everybody. Right. Right. So there's lessons maybe to be learned for everybody, but that style of motivation is certainly not. If somebody is, is, is gravelly voiced and, and low volume and fucking low light talking to me about something, I'm like, all right, man, what is this? Yeah. This isn't helping me at all. <laughs> you know what I mean? Just give me the well, facts you don't on need a piece to do of it paper. The same way though. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you, you don't you need don't. to do it the same way as yeah. that's the problem with the self-help space. Like even with Jocko and I've talked with him, you know, uh, I think three or four times on our podcast, he's mm. become a friend over the past several years, but you know, he'll post those pictures of him waking up at 4.30. And that's what he does. I don't, I don't think he's saying wake up at 4.30. I think he's saying get your ass out of bed and do what you need to get done. But so many people interpret what everybody else is doing as like, that's the right thing. I need to run like Goggins. I need to wake up at the same time Jocko does. I need to do these things these people are doing. And I tried to do that and it sucked Yeah. because it, it wasn't enjoyable. And like you said, there wasn't any way for me to attach any significance to running my ass off. So I decided, well, I'm not going to run, you know, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to do some strength training and I'm going to participate in jujitsu. And so I'm still getting after right. it, but not in the same exact way those people are. Right. Or read. I mean, there's a lot of different ways to, to approach that. And, and to be honest, we have these ideas, like particularly people that have been in the military, there was that whole ethos for years. Like we do more before 9 a.m. than the average person does all day. Like why? <laughs> right. Yeah. Why is there fucking, there's plenty of daylight left. What the fuck else are we supposed to do now? You know what I mean? It's, <laughs> it's fucking stupid. They were doing it for its own sake. But if you look at the science behind how human bodies work, you have to match your fucking most uh, 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 energetic time of day based on your circadian rhythm. Like uh, Richard Ryan, one of the owners of Black Rifle, yep. and he owns Full Mag as well. He wakes up at like two o'clock, some two or three o'clock in the morning. Sometimes he'll fucking do a little workout and then work from four to seven or so, and then go take a nap. Sure, wake back up and then go back to work around noon or two or something like that or whatever right. it is. Right, he knows when his most efficient time of day to get work done is, and that's why he's really, really good at what he does. He's got millions and millions, tens of millions of dollars in cryptocurrency now because he studied that market. But it's it's the study of the market and the moves he's made is a reflection of being very aware of himself and then honest with himself as well about who he is, yeah. when it's best for him to start doing stuff. That is something that is uh, entirely lost in the self-help space. And it's not necessarily because of the people doing the writing. It's because most people doing the reading are looking for shortcuts instead of methodologies. A methodology is not a shortcut. It's a path. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's not meant to be a shortcut. I I think what people are looking for is the formula. So, right. uh, and I know this because what, I'll put out a post or, or a podcast and, it'll, and I'll say, you know, here's, here's, here's one I just did recently. Uh, five lessons I learned at 40 because I just turned 40. And that podcast will do significantly better than any of these others because it's five, right? Mm. It's a formula. It's like, oh man, oh, well, I guess if I do these five things then my life is going to turn around and be miraculous like, right. like this guy's is. Yeah, and yeah. that's what people are looking for. You know, the formula the, or, or they'll ask me, Ryan, what's the one thing that you did to be successful? Yeah, that's dude. If it was one yeah, thing, yeah, I would have been successful long, long ago. Yeah, of course. It ain't one thing. It's a, it's a combination of things in the right order, the right place, it, sh switching them, right. priorities change, and you gotta, you gotta ebb and flow with it. Yeah, and it's a good reflection of how uh, our society has become, and also the education system. We uh, self help tends to te teach people what to think instead of how to think. But the lesson should be how to think. If, so, if, you're, mm. if you're watching somebody go through their, if you're watching a guy like Goggins, who wanted to serve his country, wasn't very good at it at first, per his own words, uh, and then had a little dose of reality and fucking got himself to where he needed to be, that journey isn't about running. It's not about being a distance runner or running every day. It's about how to identify problems, right? That are stopping you from getting to the goals you want to achieve. That's really what it's about. And we're not, most folks just don't seem capable of uh, uh, 
getting down to that level. You know what right. I mean? They take the scum off the top, but they're not looking at the fucking the real meat and potatoes of what the guy's talking about. And Jock was the same way. It's the same thing with um, the Admiral with his wake up and make your bed fucking story shit. It has nothing to do with making your fucking bed. It's not about the bed. Yeah, it's not about right. the bed. It's about having a goal, challenging yourself to do it every single day, right? But the, what's, the, well, what, what, what's, the, what's the implied task there? The implied task isn't to wake up and make your bed. It's to figure out what your goal is and then figure out the steps to get there and then do them every single fucking day. That's the implied task, That's right? right? Yeah, I, I, mean, I think social media has just conditioned us to believe that way. You get, you know, you get, you get like 140 characters to make a point, and so you're like, do these five things, or you know, I'll post about a project my son and I, my oldest son and I, are working on, which is our canoe right now. And everybody's like, well, you know, talking about building a canoe. I'm like, dude, this isn't about building a canoe. This is, this is time to get together with my son and talk with him about real issues and have real conversations. Figure out where his head's at. Try to get him on a better path. But people take things so literally because, right. again, 140 characters, got to make the point. People don't want to think past that. Or, or they'll read one post that I make and they're like, well, you know, you're the greatest asshole to ever walk the planet because you said this one thing. I'm like, dude, I've also made 7,000 other comments and I've done thousands of hours of podcasts. If you care to listen to that at all, you might see that there maybe is some nuance to what I'm saying here. Right. Well, that's in philosophy. That's called the principle of charity, right? So this uh, second century Jewish rabbi who was a historian and a philosopher, uh, Rabbi Mir, talked about the principle of charity. And basically what it is, is you take the words of somebody and their best possible meaning, not their worst. Now we tend to take things in their worst possible meaning right now. So if somebody said mm -hmm. something like, well, I don't really like uh, David Goggins methodology like, oh, well, you fucking hate David Goggins. Do you hate the military? Do you hate black people? Do you hate running? Right. What do you hate? Like, I don't hate any right. of that. I just don't that that particular style is not for me. That's ex clearly what I meant. Right. And you should assume the best of what people are saying at first. Now, if you pay enough attention, right, mm -hmm. pe people who are actual assholes will expose themselves 100 percent of the time. Like they can't help them, but expose themselves. It happens every time. Why go looking for that? Right. It doesn't make any fucking sense. And it's been, th th this is 2000 year old ideology. So it's not like th this principle wouldn't exist if people weren't already doing that 2000 years ago. People are already yeah. looking at uh, uh, different types of, of belief systems or legal systems or ph philosophical systems and saying, uh, well, you know what? This means this or fucking blah, blah, blah. Like, no, that's not <laughs> what it means. But it, and the principle of charity, taking things at face value like that is so important to the dialogue. If we can't assume each that, that everybody involved in the conversation is trying to head toward, toward some positive outcome, then it becomes tribal. We think that's the enemy now because they think differently. And that the goal from what they're thinking is clearly something that is divergent for me and, and might be problematic for me down the road. That's not true. Most people are just trying to live their lives and be left alone for the most part, but be safe under you know, Maslow's hierarchy of needs, safety, shelter, food, et cetera. That's, that's the typical goal of everybody and to take care of their family so that Maslow's needs extend out to their family, then to their community, then to their country, et cetera, et cetera, right? That is, that is the supposition in any ways. Yeah, Ryan, what- what look for trends too in people because look, I mean, you guys, you, you guys record podcasts. You've got thousands of hours of content yeah. out there. You know, if it's, you, you said something stupid at some point, probably multiple times. Oh, dude, so did I. I, did the ma I, I did the math. I actually did the math on this a couple months ago. If 1% of the shit I say is stupid, that's seven minutes per week of stupid shit that's out in the ether that anybody can exactly. download and listen to. Yeah. Exactly. Do, I, do you know what I've been thinking about the last five minutes, Ryan? What did you do with that fucking canoe? What did you do with it? I don't Why know. Why are you focused on the canoe? I've got to I gotta know the answer, brother. I don't know anybody. Like, I've yet to meet a family who had a canoe and then, and then said, hey, man, we go canoeing all the time. Ron Swanson? I, um, we I, this, this just happened to me, this house that we purchased. Um, uh, they left this fucking canoe, and they left it there. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. So I had to call the realtor, and I said, hey, do you want to call these people and see if they want their, their canoe back? And, yeah. and I got a call back, and he goes, no, they don't want their canoe. And then I go, "Really?" when I go, all right, well, what do I do with it then? You know, because I'm not a big canoeer. I've never canoed. Yeah. Uh, I've never canoodled anyone, and it's too big for the <laughs> trash can. So you can't just leave a canoe out by the, the garbage can and somebody's going to come grab your canoe. They don't really do that. Is it, 
Is it a fiberglass canoe or is it a cedar strip canoe? Do you know? It was uh, one of the green the ones. It was a, it was a green one. Was it wood or composite? Yeah, it was uh, some some sort of metal, like a metallic right. canoe. Yeah. Uh, looked like maybe it was from a summer camp of some sort, but it was so long that I figured, all right, how do you even strap this to the roof of your car and where do you go with that canoe on board? Um, well, that's probably why they left it, right? Yes, they didn't want to fucking yeah, take the- Yeah, they're asking the same questions. They didn't want to take the fucking canoe and they didn't know what to do with the goddamn thing. So now I'm stuck with the canoe and I don't know what to do with it. So I put it out <laughs> by the trash can. The, the yep. garbage men refused to take the canoe because they're like, hey dude, that's going to fill up the whole fucking truck. We're not putting right. the canoe in there. So I had to figure out a way to put this on top of my car and then just drop it off down the street at the side of the highway, um, which I did, obviously, uh, in the middle of the night so no one would see me. But, <laughs> but now when I talk to somebody who is actually building a canoe, do you canoe? No, I've, I, <laughs> I've never actually been canoeing before. Look, so here's the deal. I was at the lake last year with my family mm -hmm. and, uh, and we had... I think we rented a canoe. It was like a summer camp thing by the lake. And we're mm -hmm. like, hey, let's get a canoe for the kids. So we rented a canoe. We had a good time. I'm like, man, this would be so much better in a canoe that we built. And so I jumped online. I did a bunch of research <laughs> and found a place. And yeah, we decided to build one. So we're about 30 days out. So when you ask, what do you do with the canoe? And how do you, I, I don't know. TBD. We're yeah, TBD. Gonna, we're, yeah, we're going to take it. We got about 30 days left on this build, I think. If all goes well and according to plan, and then we'll get it to the lake and we'll have a good time. Oh, so you are going to take it out to the lake and enjoy yourself. Oh, yeah, man. Yeah, we're yeah, going yeah. yeah, to use the hell out of this thing for sure. Yeah, the, the, it's just hard to travel with, you know? It's hard no to doubt. get a canoe around yeah. town. Yeah. yeah. Really long. we got a lake two minutes from the house, so fortunately, we can just run it down there. We're good to go. Drop in the lake. No oh, problem. nice. Where, where are you at? Where do you live at? In Maine. I moved to Maine a couple of years ago from southern Utah. No shit. Uh, it's beautiful yeah. up there, man. Uh, Utah. Unbelievable. I hated Utah, yeah. man. I, I, what, part, what part? Southern, northern, all of it? Uh, so we, we, we would always have to fly into Salt Lake City uh, doing stuff with Black yeah. Rifle Coffee. And then I, I did uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I had a couple films in Sundance and all that stuff. Salt Lake um, City sucks, but Park City is dope. It, it's great. And then the south of the state is pretty cool, too, if you like hiking and mountains That's where we were. and we were skydiving and dying. shit like that. Right. Yeah. And so I don't like any of that. And then um, there's uh, St. George or whatever down there, too, that's pretty nice. In the that's winter. where we were. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. St. George area. Yeah, it was yeah. super cold. And then there was this thing called the hanging something that was like uh, some type of smog over Inversion. the city. Inversion. Yeah. Inversion. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And then it's, uh, a, it's a big bowl, right? Yeah, yeah. It is. It's, it is it the worst place on earth. All that smog and everything right in there. I got sick every time I came back. And then, um, when I was there yeah. and you're out at a restaurant, if you're boozing, it was like 3.8, which, you know, daddy couldn't get fucked up off of that. And then you have to drink the entire drink and you hand finish it. it. It's, yes. Yeah, it's 3.2. Before they give it back to the waitress and then they won't put another glass on your table for another right. drink. And I was like, right. where the fuck are we living here? And then I got a bunch of weird looks from people. They all seem to know each other, but they, they weren't friends. They just kind of knew each other and they knew that I wasn't from there. And then I, I realized... The, the Mormon thing. I got told about the Mormon thing, and I, I didn't know yeah. what that was either. You're not Mormon. No. That's the problem. No. It's very clicky. <laughs> it is. It, it's, it's very clicky. And so, like, uh, m even my friends who had lived there, they didn't know their neighbors or anything else. And it was, uh, they were the only non-Mormons in, like, the neighborhood. And well, you like, can oh, imagine shit. how, I mean, you know, you know some of us. You can imagine how it was with me and Jared Taylor and Matt Best and Evan Hafer. Yes. And, and, so and, I, would, I would say at Matt's house. Yeah. And fucking, <laughs> and fucking yeah. Rocco yeah. and Eli and yeah. all those assholes living in Salt Lake City and making a scene all the time. Because we can't help ourselves. Like, we're, we can't stop making scenes. It's going to happen no matter where we are. That's why we moved to Texas, because the type of scene we make is conducive to this environment right sure and so i, I would stay at matt's house because jared's house was just a goddamn disaster which, oh yeah which cottonwood heights still yeah. is now right yeah. so um i would stay at matt's house and even matt like I, matt is a friendly guy matt best is what i'm talking about friendly sure. guy yeah. gets along with mm -hmm. everybody um all of that and i was like man i don't see any of your neighbors hanging out no whatever he goes no dude they do not do that here and i was like wow this is weird so mm -hmm. we just kind of went home every day didn't really chat with anybody and then had our 3.2 drinks and moved on with our lives. And I was like, when can I get out of here? So the fact that you're in Maine, uh, which is beautiful and amazing, and uh, uh, the property value is, is cheaper there. So I'm sure you could get like a goddamn huge place oh. up in Maine. Yeah, yeah. The, the place that we have, we've got a big uh, 5,000 square foot place. It was built in the early 1900s, like about 50 acres. We've got a, a three to 4,000 square foot barn 
uh, that's connected to the house that, again, was built in 1912. This place is unbelievable. And where I was, I mean, you're not going to find a place like this, but it would probably cost you where I was at, I mean, a couple of million, at least a couple of million where yeah. I was at. Yeah, and yeah. I'm sure you can just walk out your back door and go punch a moose in the face if you want. Uh, if I see one and I want to take on a moose, I could certainly do that. I don't know if I would take that upon myself. No, definitely don't. Yeah. yeah. No. Are they, are they nope. fierce? <laughs> Is a moose Dude. fierce? Uh, yeah, I, I, they're, yeah, they're not, mean sons they're, of they're, not, they're not nice. Are they really? Yeah, they're not nice. Oh, yeah. Oh, and they're, yeah. They're kind of dicks, yeah, you, too. Like they're, aside from just being mean, I wouldn't say they're particularly aggressive, but don't approach them. You know what I mean? Yeah, you don't you don't want to cross paths with a moose or a no. bison. By the way, I well, see. the bison I know because I've seen the bison attacks, but I've never seen a moose attack. And well, I just figured you could go up, give it a rap on the beak, and uh, and you know go some, for the title. Some of them, some of them are actually kind of docile. The ones up in uh, Western Canada, not docile is not the right word, but they're just kind of like they're dicks. Not aggressive, but they're dicks. In okay. in in, can, in Western Canada in particular, they'll just stand in the middle of the fucking road. Yeah. And you can't move them. Like you're trying to yeah, coax them out. Do? Like you, right. like seriously, you can you can drive up to your car and like kind of lean on them with the car a little bit, and they'll just like lean and then come back when you stop and just stand there and look <laughs> at you and then go back to fucking staring into the woods for no reason. Right. I can't tell if it's some kind of passive aggressive bullshit. Yeah. Or what the fuck is going on? But it's the weirdest thing I've ever seen in my life. <sighs> Imagine punching We're that moose. We have a problem though. up here actually with the moose. We have uh, we have these ticks that have uh, started to evolve uh -oh. and uh, be able to, to survive through the winters. And they are starting to decimate the moose population up here. They'll latch onto these calves and the cows uh, and then live off of them all year and then kill them just by sucking out all their blood. It's, uh, it's pretty insane, man. This tick, tick problem is a big deal up here. Jesus Christ. So what, that's what, are how, the, what are the name of those, Hot Bob? What's the name of the moose ticks? Vampire ticks. Vampire ticks? I have no idea. I just made that up. But yeah, it yeah, sounds yeah. like a goddamn no, vampire, know. doesn't it? Sort of. Yeah, no, they're nasty. Um, Looks like it's called the winter tick. The winter tick is what That's, it's called. Yeah. All right. Is that like the winter Yeah, soldier? they evolve. Jesus Christ, man. I've never even heard about shit like this. There's some things that I just don't want to know in this world either, too, where I'm just like, man, I didn't know. I didn't need to know that existed ever in my life. Now, that's something else yeah. I got to worry about. What if one of those little fuckers latches onto your kid? Does that mean, you know, a kid is smaller than oh, a moose. Ticks are nasty, man. They've got they've got Lyme disease, mm. and they're just they're just they're just nasty, nasty things. So yeah, I mean, during this uh, spring and summer, we're doing tick checks and everything else. It's it's a problem. It's a problem. Shit. You need to be aware of it for sure. Man, dude. Uh, yeah, I only think shit. One place I lived, we had to look for ticks. Um, and the fucking dog can't get getting ticks all the time. Did yeah. You, you get a, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You have a dog. We've got two dogs. When, when we first moved here, one of them uh, got a tick right on his head and we didn't notice. And it, that tick became engorged, you know, yep. it just fills up on blood and it comes all nasty. Uh, Same thing so happened to me. Yeah. Yeah. But then you, but the, the dogs take a pill. Um, I think there was some sort of pill for, for humans, but they, uh, they did away with that. I don't know what it was doing, but yeah, that, knows, that's, a right? that, that's a bigger issue than COVID. I think that's the issue we should be focusing on is how, how we can get rid of this tick tick problem this Lyme disease problem that people are dealing with yeah I mean fuck dude uh, if if we're just giving out doling out vaxes with no data let's give out some of those tick tacks might as well uh, go yeah, back let's, to the, the tick tacks I like that let's get some of those tick tacks in our body and like I'd rather pop one down yeah because when my dog my dog had the exact same thing you were talking about yeah and then uh, another yeah. one we had to burn it off the fucking ear of this yeah. goddamn thing and like to the dog hated me and well one of the problems with removing ticks is you got to get the whole thing out yeah. Get, yeah. Otherwise, yeah. it would get infected and shit in there. Yeah. It's nasty. Yeah, it is nasty. Yeah. Uh, we we used to have a tick check as a child too. When you when we came back, I'm from Georgia, so oh know, yeah, 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 same you, thing. Yeah, same you go issue. out you go out for PE and you come back, and there was one kid that had it, and uh, you know he was the outcast in fourth grade, and we were just like, oh shit, Stephen had the yeah. tick. Yeah, that who, was who's gonna hang out with Stephen at lunch today? <laughs> That's um, right. That fucking weirdo. Uh, he's, got, exactly. he's got ticks all over him. Where else do they go? Um, <laughs> those are main problems, though. You ever go up to Kennet Bunkport? Uh, I've been a couple of times, and it's uh, it's pretty amazing. Uh, my wife and I went on the ocean. This is probably three or four months ago. We we're going to do some deep sea fishing out there, but the sea was too rough, so we couldn't. So the captain basically just drove us around the bay. He showed us uh, Bush's place, and so we, we kind of – pulled the boat up to there and everything so yeah it's it's a beautiful place kind of bunkport is amazing gorgeous isn't it oh unbelievable unbelievable yeah well what, what's the weather like how, like how many months is it actually warm there out of the year would you say three or four no i, I 
probably through, let's see, I would say May, it starts to warm up a little bit through, I would say June to like end of September, October, somewhere right in there. And then, and then it's cold and yeah. miserable. Yeah, well, yeah. I know, I know what you don't want to do right now up there. And that is venture over the border into communist Canada where they now yeah, have man. people under lock and key in their own homes. Have you heard, have you seen this bullshit? I saw it's those crazy. videos. Is that real? You yeah, can't it's have fucking people real. Over. It's real. And you can't have people over uh, or they can they can stop you at any point. I mean, this is yeah. this is insane. I've never man. seen it's anything not like that. Good. And they're asking for home addresses. That was the video I saw last night. Was that real too? Yeah. Yeah, they ask you for your home address and 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 the woman when questioned uh, about it. She's one of the uh, the leaders up there in Ontario. When questioned about it, She's like, well, what's the recourse if the person refuses to either stay home or give them their address? He goes, well, at that point, they're breaking the law. What law? Right. Did you guys vote on a law or did you just say it was the law? Because people do that sometimes. That's crazy, isn't it? Yeah, well, yeah. Canada, yeah. man. Is it that bad up there? Is COVID that bad there still? No, 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 it's not. Not, not in Maine. No. Nobody no. has it in Maine. I mean, it's we've only got one and a half million people in the state. But, I mean, I don't know what's, what it's like in Canada, but it's certainly not bad here. Yeah, we're in Texas and we're, we're, going, to that, uh, we're going to the Kentucky Derby in like two weeks. There's 30,000 <laughs> live fans there. Uh, we got a right. gig at the Canelo fight the following week, and there's going to be 60,000 at that one. Yeah. Um, what the well, fuck is Canada And doing? a baseball game the day before where there will probably be about forty to 60,000 people there. Yeah, yes, exactly. yes. It's, yeah. it's, it's, it's not. No, the answer is no. Um, now, Canada does take a lot of heat for its socialized health care, and uh, uh, they, they have good – They actually, the one thing they did do right up there was to control – pharmaceutical prices. Mm -hmm. This is something that the U.S. government has never even attempted to do because they're getting way too much money yeah. from these assholes. Yeah, yeah. Um, but that's one thing they did. But one of the big gripes about Canada's socialized medicine program is a lack of incentive for doctors and the long wait lines for any kind of medical treatment, right? Now, if you're a specialist, if it's, if it's um, like if you're getting fake tits and shit, that's pretty easy. Sure. But actual general medicine, it can be difficult to get in to get seen sometimes up there. And um, I would expect even with limited uh, COVID exposure up there, if you have an older population, then you're going to see hospitals overrun. Maybe. Maybe, oh, that, gotcha. maybe that's what their whole thing is. But again, we saw this between California and Texas. California decided to shut everything down. And then as they gradually released people back into the wild, there were huge spikes, right? Yeah. So in mm -hmm. Texas, people, just yeah. gra people gradually got exposed and the hospitals never got overwhelmed, right? And in California, they locked everybody down and they all got exposed at the same time and then overwhelmed the hospitals. It is a self-fulfilling prophecy based in fucking stupidity, yeah. frankly. And if that's what Canada's doing up there, that's how it is. I mean, you can't fight a virus any, without exposing people any more than you can fight bad ideas by, by silencing people. Bad ideas get exposed with conversation and they get overrun by good ideas. Viruses get, get uh, 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 we, we adapt to them by exposure. Right. Right. That's how that works. Sure. So you're just not it, they are fucking failing their people up there. And not only that, with these authoritarian measures they're using, that that is not good for the future either. Like, forget about COVID and what's happening now. That is setting the most dangerous precedent you could set, which is the government can fucking come into your home, literally, and arrest you for not doing what they told you to do. Fuck that shit. Yeah, is, uh, I mean? are Canadians going to become the new Mexicans where they just hop over the border? Is that, is that what's going to happen here? I could definitely see I'll, that. I'll tell you what. Look, I'll tell you what. So when I first moved here two years ago, uh, I got an invite to go spend a couple of days with Border Patrol up here in Maine. Uh -huh. And it was, a, it was a rad experience. And, and so they took me up there and they're like, hey, we're going to go to the border. We're going to show you the border. I'm like, cool. So we hop on the four wheelers. We ride up to the border and, and they stop it kind of opens up a little bit. They stop. They're like, we're here. I'm like, what do you mean we're here? They're like, we're here. Here's the border. And I said, where, like, where's the border? And they're like, it's right. You're standing on it. You're actually standing in Canada right now. <laughs> really? And there's, yeah, dude, it's called the slash. There's, there's a, anywhere from 20 to 50 yards, maybe a little bit uh, wider in some places. That's just basically maintained. It's just cleared. The forest is cleared. And that, that slash represents the border and every so often it, it could be 20 yards it could be 200 yards you'll see a little uh a little cement marker that shows where the border is and then there's checkpoints on highways scattered periodically but if you look at the state of maine what's really interesting is you look at the 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 entire state which is which is a huge border and then you look at all of the coastline of maine because of all the little ports and everything else and they are significantly undermanned. So what I anticipate and what Border Patrol is telling me 
is that we're gonna we're gonna go down. Well, we were uh, prior to, prior to Biden, and secure the Mexican border. Okay, well, what what are the criminals gonna do who want to come into the country? Are they gonna go through the path of most resistance or least resistance? Right. So what they were seeing is a lot of people coming up into Canada and then working their way down through Canada into Maine. That's only gonna work a certain part of the year because if you go in the winter, you're dead. So that's a pretty good natural deterrent. But outside of that, there is so much border and coast to worry about and defend that it's nearly impossible for our border patrol agents up there. Man. Yeah, that that is. Uh, that, saw, I, you never think about it. That border is huge. I mean, look. Yeah. No, yeah. you wouldn't. And, and the jackal, they didn't come across the Mexican border. He fucking went across the, uh, what was it, Lake Michigan? Yeah. For a boat so. race or some is shit. That, uh, is that the uh, the Rich- 9-11 guy? Or who- no, no, Richard Gere. Richard Gere. <laughs> Richard yeah. Gere and Bruce yeah. Willis. Oh. Yeah. Uh, it's not real. Oh, <laughs> it's I, a I movie. I didn't know who you were talking. Because yeah, there was a guy in it Ri- that uh, came down through the Canadian border into Maine. I think he actually went down into Boston. Was it and Richard And that's how Gere? he got in the United States during 9-11. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, yeah we always think about, we, we talk a lot about Richard Gere on this show. We do, um, yeah. Mostly, mostly hey, gerbil-related stuff. Who does but We're gearheads. <laughs> We're gearheads on It's, it's primarily show, gerbil related. Yeah. Because uh, we're, 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 we're also worried about the ticks on the gerbils, you know? It's not, not. That's the real issue. It's not it, the gerbil. It's the tick on the gerbil. Yeah. yeah. It's not just the sexual abuse of the gerbil itself. <laughs> it's, uh, it's that tick on the gerbil, you know? That's right. When you came on today, was there any thought of you that thought you'd be talking about sexual ticks on gerbils? And, uh, I, you know, I come into these things with an open mind, but no, no, I, I had no <laughs> idea we'd be going down this route, but I'm glad, I'm glad that we did. I am too. Cause I, I feel that people aren't talking about it enough. You know, nobody talks about Richard <laughs> Gere anymore. That just kind of flew under the radar. Mm-hmm. And it was just like, Oh yeah, th- that guy used to have gerbils. I don't even know if that's a real story, by the way. Probably not. Yeah, but it sounds it good, doesn't it's it? It's one of those wives' it tales. Be. And to be honest, I mean, Richard Gere was slamming so much ass back then. I can see it. Only, and not because I think he's a weirdo or anything, but Russell Brand ended up getting people running over his fucking dick with a wheelchair at some point. You yeah. Because yeah. he was just, he'd, fuck, he'd done so much weird shit. It was like, all right, what's, what's new? Got to do something. <laughs> yeah. Have you, are you heard, have you uh, heard of wheelchair burn? No, I have not heard of this. Oh, really? No. Yeah, no. it, it gets dark, man. Um, I'm out of the loop, I guess. Yeah, you you, uh, you know you get hard, and then you have somebody run over your boner, your penis, on a, in a wheelchair, and yeah, it's a it's a dark cycle. But I understand it. This, so the the most infamous case was uh, Russell Brand, and that's the rumor that's uh, why him and Katy Perry broke up because he was just on a whole another like sexual level of like crazy shit, like wheelchair. Porn. You'd have to be to go to go that route. You'd have to be on a different level. Well, that's right. the thing is like when I when I heard the term first and then second who was attached to of, of, of russell brand i was like oh well yeah that makes sense because i think you know in his book he was saying that he he would let people suck his dick for for drugs and things like that like uh dudes uh like at, at bus stops and things like that so wow. yeah it makes sense if that's where you're you're going because what happens is you just run out of shit to do and then you're like all right well what's left on this earth how do i get off and it's it's wheelchair porn you know? Uh, no, I don't. Uh, <laughs> hey, I guess. Uh, I don't know how you make that connection, but somebody's made it. It sounds like there's, look, there's always somebody out there. It's the weirdest shit. What, whatever you think you're, you're weird about or you're quirk, there are people out there that are already into it, and there's millions of them. And you just got to find them. Yeah. Oof. Yeah. Well, that's rule 34 of the internet, right? If you can imagine it, porn of it exists. Oh, yeah. 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 Right? Yeah. You just got to, you know, be diligent completely because you're well you're, that's actually part of the problem with the internet is that it used to be you know you'd always have the weird kid right like the tick kid you were talking about earlier that's yeah the weirdo that's the outcast Steven, right and yeah. there's always one every class has it every town has one that's the crazy guy yeah and then what happens in the internet is you realize that or give these guys a platform where all these crazy ass people can get together and validate their ideas and and then it becomes loud and somewhat credible because they see that there's other people who are into this thing, and, and all of a sudden you have some of the weirdest shit out there as kind of a mainstream thought that just wouldn't have gained any traction any other way. Right. Yeah, and I'm sure, like, with your fans, like, I'm, I bet you somebody's asked you to do some weird shit online for them for a certain amount of money, because um, there's a lot of outdoor porn. That's true, yeah. A lot yeah. of outdoor porn. I don't... I mean... I don't know... <laughs> 
The one that, oh no, come if on. If you were going to ask someone Any to do weird, some weird I mean, shit. I'm, I'm hesitant to say. Go ahead. We got a I'm just delayed. hesitant to say I don't know if I've received anything like that because as soon as I say something like that, somebody will start making some requests. So yeah, exactly. yeah. I'm a little hesitant to, to say that I have or have not got those kind of requests. Don't blame you. No, I, I, I don't blame you. Yeah, because like extreme sports, uh, there was one that I caught where uh, they were rock climbing and then they were banging as they were rock climbing. They're pretty high up. Um, and it, neither of them looked like they were having a good time. It was more or less about the completion of it. Um, because they were rock climbing, obviously, and it was just like, ah, shit. Somebody, you know, had coaxed them into that, and they wanted the $2,500 a piece. And, uh, you know, you're, you're in those carabiners and all that shit, and, dude, you, you kind of just want to finish the job and get the fuck out of there, but you also need the, the shots, you know? Uh, but, but I watched it. Uh, I wasn't into it. It was more or less like, holy shit, are these people going to die? Like, and that was what was in it for me, you know? And I think that's, there's, there's probably an element of it to that, uh, like axe throwing or something. Like, I bet you there's, there's some wild shit with like axe throwing that's, that's getting around the dark web that we don't know about right now. Yeah, I, I, I'm fine with it staying there. That's fine with me. <laughs> stay in that dark web and, and, I'll, and I'll stay over here in the light web or whatever the alternative is and I'm good with that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because you, <laughs> once you stay in the light web, you know, and you go to the dark, you can't ever come back at that point. You can't, you're not coming back. You are not coming back from that. Yeah, I'm surprised you haven't explored, like, some wild shit. Like, you've had, you've had a, a ton of, of, of guests on, like, that are super, like, you know, dude dudes where it's like, hey, I'm surprised nothing like that has ever popped off, you know? Not, no, really hasn't, man. We've, we've kept it above the line pretty well, so can't say that there is. Yeah, this guy I'm, doesn't. I'm kind of, this I'm guy kind doesn't. Of, I'm kind of scared and intrigued at the same time now. I, now you're, now you're going to get out there and go do it. The problem is porn is now know, ruined. Porn has been censored now. So you can't yeah, well, show there's it. There's a lot, a lot going on with, uh, with Pornhub and things like that. Yep. Is that what you're referring to? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So most of the good shit has been censored, and then uh, it's just it's kind of bland now. So I I haven't really perused in in a very long time. I kind of feel like I've gotten to the end of the internet. I don't but really I'm a, I'm a, I'm a light web light web guy too. I'm not a dark, dark web. <laughs> is, there, is light web the correct? No, he made that up, and I'm I like it, so I'm gonna yeah. adapt it. But, not, uh, yeah, I like that. Yeah, yeah. use it. Yeah, I'm a use light it. web guy. There was somebody though who called in and was telling us to go to something dark. Um, I was, it was Giorgio. Yeah. Uh, ask him what the name of that, that fucking thing was. That, was. that haunted my dreams the other day. What are you asking? What was that one site you told us to go to and you showed us online as we were on air? Oh, Motherless. Motherless. Oh, I've mentioned that a number yeah, of Dan, times. Yeah, Dan's the one who told me about that. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So I, I ended up doing it, Giorgio. I, did, I went to Motherless. Yeah, one. you don't want to do that. It was a bad time. Yeah, it's not a good time. You're on a list. You're on a list now. Yeah, you're definitely going to jail. Yeah, that was a. It was terrible. Um, not, for, uh, it's just the quality of it. Like the people, it was like fucking meth heads and shit like that. Like, yeah, it's very bizarre. Everything that happens in there is really bizarre. Yeah, it was. There was a one girl who was kind of painted like uh, like a clown, like Anna Nicole Smith, mm -hmm. right before she offed herself. Wow, or OD'd or whatever. Yeah, whatever happened. And then uh, she was missing some teeth and shit. But um, and then there was other one with the. With, they were just tying their shoes together. Um, and then pushing them over on a couch inside a trailer. Yeah, the, all that uh, all that weird <laughs> niche stuff, cake farting and all that stuff is yeah. over there. Why are we talking about this? Uh huh. Why? I, sorry, man. It's it's four twenty. I uh, got I got enough. high right before we went on today, so I, I apologize. <laughs> this is what's in the back of my mind today, because um, I don't celebrate again. I don't celebrate Hitler's birthday. That's why I get high. Damn. Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, it's not about Hitler for sure. No, no, not at all. Where, not at all. You're not. You, you said that, you were. Is that where 420? I don't know. Is that where 420 originated? No, it's it was the the origin for the weed thing is some uh, surfer I think in Central Coast California, but uh, it is Hitler's birthday. It's also apparently where the Grateful Dead uh, when they get off school at four o'clock, yeah, yeah. they would meet at 420. Yeah, that oh, that well right. that that was the rumor started by this famous all surfer right. back in the in the 60s. Like the, the, the surfer started a rumor that the Grateful Dead used to do that. Who knows if any of that's real or not, but sure, it doesn't matter at this point. Again, right? like we said earlier, just an excuse, right? Just yeah. another excuse people are looking for. Yeah, you don't for need sure. an excuse. Just go do it. If you want to do it, do it. You don't need an excuse. Exactly. Yeah. No, not at all. Um, you ever get down on the Grateful Dead? No, I'm not a music guy, actually. People ask me about music all the time. Like, 
I'm not a music what guy. I, I've never heard a human I, being say that. I don't before. think I have either, man. Wait, you don't listen to I'm music not, at all? I'm not. No, no shit. I, I really don't. I don't listen to a lot of music. Nah. So it's uh, that's a weird thing about me for sure. I know because people are asking me about this and that. I'm like, I don't know. I don't know. Strange. Uh, I don't think I've ever heard that in my entire life. That uh, I, you're not a that's music first time. First you're not time a music you guy. Here. So what do you do? What do you, what do you do when you're fucking building canoes and shit? Like you don't listen to music or anything? Not typically. Nah, just hanging out with my boy. Or if I even if I'm working out, I'm listening to podcasts or a book on tape or whatever. And and yeah, just don't listen to a lot of music. Whatever's playing is fine. I don't care. No shit. So like if 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 yeah. you and I were working out together, right? Let's say we we're doing lats. Uh, I, and I throw on Metallica. You fine with that? Yeah, man. Dave Matthews. Uh, I don't know if I'd do lats to Dave Matthews, but yeah, sure. You right. know, in the right in the right context. Katy Perry, Firework. A, I, I couldn't even tell you. It's a banger. It's a banger. Uh, I don't understand why. <laughs> I'm going to listen to it. Maybe. Well, maybe because I haven't heard it. Maybe that'll turn me into a music guy. I don't know. Maybe. Pop it on. What's the, what does that say behind you, by the way? I'm looking up, up at your, uh, your screen there. What are, what are the words on the wall right behind you? This one here? Yeah. So this one says, when nothing seems to help, I go and look at a stonecutter hammering away at his rock, perhaps a hundred times without as much as a crack showing in it. Yet at the hundred and first blow, it will split in two. And I know... It was not that blow that did it, but all that had gone before. No sh and is that your inspiration to get going for the day? That's part of it. I've got a lot of them. I've got uh, a poem that my son wrote. I've got an excerpt from Man in the Arena. I've got a code of conduct over here. I don't think you can see it. Maybe you can in the corner. Right oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There. yeah Another yeah. code of conduct that my, son, my two oldest sons and I wrote. So I've got stuff everywhere to get me going. So motivational okay. like advice, that's your, that's your jam, right? Um, so that gets you going. So mine's, mine's music. I understand that now. Okay. Um, I used to have a yeah. roommate in college yeah. who used to tape shit to his mirror all the time, and it was like inspirational quotes every day. Right. Look, I'm not, a, I'm not above listening to some music to get me going. It's just something that's not too big of a concern for me. Yeah, no, it sounds like you are. It sounds like you hate music <laughs> and you're anti-music. Um, yeah. And that's fine. Just go to... I am. We'll go to your Instagram. You know, Everybody put you know who hashtag anti-music. You know who else was anti-music? Anne Frank? <laughs> well, well, Hitler too, but yeah. Hitler. But yeah, 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 obviously. So. Obviously. Just not... <laughs> Not making a connection. I'm just saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's important today. He wasn't. His he, that's not true. He was an artist. Just putting He's it out there. Not. Today's is his birthday for sure. <laughs> I will tell you, I picked up the guitar uh, last year, the end of last year, uh, and started playing, uh -huh. and uh, just wasn't my thing, man. I, I wanted to try it. Just wasn't my thing. <laughs> but did you know any songs? Because you don't listen to music. No, I, I read the book or whatever, the note thing, and showed me the music, and I tried to play them. I'm like, yeah, I don't, uh, this isn't for me. <laughs> That's great. Uh, I, I actually really enjoy it. I've never, I've never heard somebody say I don't like music. I've never heard any human being say that before. That's amazing, though. That's amazing. But, but you like inspirational quotes and everything. Who's your favorite yeah, dude from sure, the past? Folks. Like, if you, yeah, if you could bring somebody back to life to go out and fucking chop some shit up in the woods with, who would it be? I would say the two guys would be maybe George Washington. Theodore Roosevelt is another big inspiration for me. So yeah. I, I'd say those two guys for sure. Yeah. Yeah. You wouldn't share an apple with uh, Washington, but uh, you could chop wood and shit. He's got those wooden teeth, obviously. Chop wood. Yeah. He's got the teeth, which I've seen, by the way, since we moved out here. I've seen those, those pair of dentures he's got. No They're shit. Really Where, are, they, are, they on, are they on display? Yeah, for sure. Where at? Yeah, they're on display. And, uh, uh, Mount Vernon. So they're, they're there, um, at his home and they are, they do not look comfortable. They're not like your modern dentures. They look miserable. You wouldn't want to wear those things. Yeah. All, yeah. All it time. turns out that you wouldn't want to be, uh, uh, alive and black back then either, because a lot of those teeth, <laughs> I'm not kidding. were no, no. forcefully pulled from the mouths of slaves. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. That's is probably that right. Great. Yes, yeah. that yeah. is right. Yeah. That's true. Well, and I think there's, I think there's this really interesting thing. We have these fantasies of like what, what, you know, the, uh, wild West looked like or early American history. And I'm like Rome or something like this. It's like, mm. we, we fantasize about it. We make it like, it's really cool. Like mm -hmm. I, I wouldn't want to live in those days because it would be horrible. Absolutely horrible. You know, yeah. a lot of people complain about it being bad now. It ain't, it ain't bad now compared to what it was. That's for sure. No, definitely not. Yeah, and it's shit, man. I, look, I, I look back at it and I'm like, 
No, I, only one thing is appealing of like not having a phone or social media or anything. And, uh, you know, that would be great where I, you know, I didn't have to look at a fucking text message to worry about if my kid was, um, you know, abducted from a fucking daycare or something like that. Right. right. Um, and that would be nice. Like I would not like to have phones and all that other bullshit or computers, but, uh, the rest of it. No, I mean, people were dying from like the tick thing. Forget it, dude. They didn't have any tic tacs back then. No. If you had a tick, survive. yeah, you no were tic-tacs fucking available. dead. You were losing. No your, vaccines. Nope. You're probably losing both no. your arms. Same time. You know, it's rotting right off your body. Gone. Gone. Uh, none of that stuff like seems appealing to me whatsoever. Even when I was a kid and they take you to those old houses, you know, like the log cabins and shit like that. I'm from Georgia and they would take you to the old civil war, you know, houses oh, yeah, and right. things like that. I was like, yeah. They were like, oh, isn't this beautiful? And the craftsmanship and all this shit. And I was like, no, it's fucking hot. I mean, it is pretty amazing. There's no AC up in this bitch. (laughs) It's pretty amazing what those folks were able to do with not a lot. And to be honest, the difference between uh, being completely uncomfortable and then mildly uncomfortable is just a little bit of effort. Yeah. So you you map that onto today's world where you have where so much. You know what I mean? Yeah. And you think with just a little bit of effort, we can we can get there. The problem is that this it different amounts of effort are required depending on your station in life. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, we, we've, through our own ignorance, and it's the same thing that's happened in Canada right now, but it's through our own ignorance. We've packed people that we feel like are disadvantaged into groups, mm-hmm. into, into geographic locations, and then taken all their opportunity away from them, whether it's fucking coal miners in West Virginia or uh, uh, fucking black people in South Central. You know what I mean? Yeah. And there's food deserts. Do you deserts think we've that, taken, that, taken those opportunities? Uh, your well, phrasing is just interesting. I'm curious about that. I, I think uh, through our... It's a confluence of uh, generational uh, poverty, right? And, yes, agreed. Um, sure. And I can't tell if the left is intentionally trying to lead these people along with the carrot of... of you know, free shit, or if it's, if they're actually just stupid and don't understand why that doesn't work, you know what I mean? But either way, the result is the same. You, economic empowerment isn't giving people free shit. It's giving them the tools to make their own shit. I mean, we've had this phrase, teach a man to fish. It's education. For a a bajillion years. Right. Like ever since human languages existed, the principle of let's teach people how to think and not what to think. And let's mm-hmm. teach people how to fucking make their own shit and protect themselves and not fucking be a babysitter for them. That has been a consistent theme throughout human history. And every time we've backed out of that particular theme, it's led to communism or fascism or some kind of totalitarian bullshit. Right. And we see it now. Like if you think about the principle of gentrification, if you're on the side of somebody that lives in that area and you're affluent, gentrification seems like a good idea. Like, Hey, we, we, now there's all these stores and all this and this and this, and, and in reality, and you're right to be happy about that. But the other side of that is that you've effectively displaced a lot of people economically who are already struggling economically. What did we do to help those fucking people? Why didn't we take, why didn't we turn them into the owners of these new businesses we created? You know what I mean? So they can continue to exist on the land they exist on and we can all benefit from the a rising tide lifts all boats. Right. Yeah. So instead of doing that, yeah, but I don't we think, think of it, displacing I think people. It, I don't think it starts with, I mean, the thing you said right there is like make these people the business owners. They don't, I mean, look, they don't have the, the ability to run a business and, and that's not a personal indictment against their, their, their intelligence or their ability. It's just, they don't have the skill set. So I think you're right, but I think it starts with education. You know, th- th- this is what we need to right, do. Right, right, for sure. I agree with that. Individual. But education is, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a phrase that gets used a lot these days and has lost all meaning. Because if by education you mean universities, completely disagree. And I, we had a guy named James Altisher on recently, and you should definitely have him on if you haven't already. We'll, yeah, he's we'll, coming on in uh, next month, I think. Perfect. We've got him uh, he's right awesome, now. dude. Yeah, he's, he's, it's yeah, one of the best sure. interviews we've ever done. Yeah. And his new book, Skip the Line, talks about this all the time. Fuck, forget about all this formal, I mean, formal education can be useful in a lot of ways, but forget about all that shit. If you want to skip the line, you develop micro skills. So we need to teach people how to be entrepreneurs, right? We're in a creator economy now. We're not in legacy economies anymore where you have to go, like you have to go start uh, as an apprentice and become a master somewhere. No, you could fucking get on the internet, find a gap in the market, figure out how to execute on that gap and make yourself a millionaire overnight. Not right. overnight, but like you can, you can do all that shit yourself. You just have to have the ability and the power to do that, or the, I'm sorry, the ability and the will to do it. The problem is that 
like I said, well, the, the point I was making before, these people in West Virginia see no version of upward mobility. And because they don't right. see that, and the same thing is in, is in, in ghettos across the country, because they don't see this pathway to upward mobility, they don't feel any equity in the fucking American system of government at all. They think that they're uh, anti government. Right. Or they, they think they're anti, or America's anti them because they don't feel included in the process. And that's a real thing, right? Like if you go to a party and nobody's talking to you, you fucking leave. Yeah. And you go do something else. This is how it is. And we've not done. <sighs> Republicans, by and large, have ignored this issue. And Democrats have made it far worse, right? Democrats have made it far worse by giving people handouts and then for some reason convincing them that they can't do it on, them, on their own, which is nonsense. Republicans have tried, it, it, particularly recently, Trump actually tried pretty hard to convince black people like, hey, you can do this too. And he, I mean, they had the lowest unemployment rate of all in their entire history yeah. under Trump. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. people are trying to solve some of these problems. The problem is we see it as an us versus them situation. And that's not what it is. It's all, it's all of us versus poverty because poverty is the number one predictor of crime and crime creates instability and stability affects the economy at large. Right. And it creates all this civil unrest and all this bullshit. It is incumbent upon us to look at each individual as that, as an individual and say, Hey, what do you need? And I'm not talking about babysitting, right? I'm talking about providing it's, it's no different than providing roads. We all use them, right? Mm -hmm. So let's make sure they're fucking good. We all use education, whatever happens to be. It doesn't, it's, if it's a university, if it's a fucking trade school, if it's just online classes to teach somebody how to create their own business, whatever it is, right? That's what has to happen because it's the same reason I, a lot of people are like extremely anti-tax. I'm not anti-tax, I'm anti-waste, right? I want to live in a country that takes care of its people, right? And it starts with all of us taking care of each other. Fuck this government bullshit, right? If we're not able to admit that there's an issue and start taking care of each other, we are all fucked, completely fucked. Yeah, and uh, you know, with-, with Yeah, the, I think that makes sense. And when you- Go ahead. Keep going. Go ahead. Uh, no, there's, there's a, there's a say, little bit of you, lag time. Yeah, when okay. you talked about education, yeah, there is. When you were talking about uh, education, I agree with you. You know, like, like pu public education, universities. In fact, my kids over the past couple of years, we've done homeschooling for some of those reasons. Um, so, yeah, education, certainly not exclusively through public schooling and universities. But even this, even what we're doing now is a form of education. You know, you got books on your desk. We got podcasts available, like getting this information out. Here's part of the problem I see, though, is so many people use these opportunities to educate through books, podcasts, videos, et cetera, et cetera, to rally people around and behind victimhood as opposed to uplifting and edifying people. Yeah, of course. Like, hey, like we have this amazing opportunity to teach somebody something. And instead, we're going to teach them why everybody's out to get them, why they're the victim, why, why they should be outraged and offended. And they're not learning anything other than just to be pissed about their current situation. It's not obviously conducive to their own growth and like you said, upward mobility. No, sitting around whining about the problem isn't gonna fucking solve anything. I mean, that's just not how yeah, life works. Definitely. And, uh, you know, it, but it, again, you have to have buy-in. When, when people in rural West Virginia see coal moving away and they're like, well, that's all I've ever done. I don't know what else to do. The vast majority of those people are going to feel completely left out of the American experience at that point, right? And in 50 or 100 years or however long it is from now, they're going to behave towards government the same way that fucking black people in, in Southern California do right now or in Chicago or anything like that. They're going to feel the same way. They're going to feel disenfranchised. Uh, when, you know, it, we've, we've done, when I say we, I mean the people. I don't give two fucks about the government. The government is completely full of shit. Uh, and politicians are all cunts too. So uh, I, I, we shouldn't expect anything from them. We have to bypass these assholes and make sure that these people are fucking communicating with us in a real way. The first step, in my opinion, is to get people to turn the fucking news off because it's not yeah. news anymore. It's all propaganda. And you can see it just from CNN yesterday. So after Maxine Waters talked all her shit, right? Right. The first article on CNN that came out was from Chris Aliza, who's kind of a cunt himself, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Big one. Uh, his, his headline was Maxine Waters just inflamed a very volatile situation. And he went on to explain how not only did she inflame this time, but she's done it in the past, right? Yeah. It's a pretty heady article. But then somewhere about, I don't know, two thirds of the way down the page, he starts talking about, oh, but it's so it like 
Trump supporters fucking saying this is a incitement is they're really hypocritical. And then on the front page of CNN, right? It says Maxi, it says Waters comments on Chauvin trial expose Republican hypocrisy. So it's not about fucking calling somebody out for being wrong. It's about like, hey, she was wrong, but you guys are you, you're, the other side is, right. is wrong also. Gotcha moment. Right? Yeah, yeah, it's it's about fucking dividing. And I, I'll say it for the thousandth goddamn time. If someone is trying to divide you, they are trying to conquer you. That is it. CNN's not just trying to sell ad space. They're trying to manipulate the fucking social fabric of America right now. And it's not just them. It's all media. Now, people are, <laughs> they're, they're seeing record low numbers. And sports organizations other than the UFC are seeing record low numbers because of this bullshit. People are tired of being lied to. People know that all, these, all this data about uh, how police interact with black people. The, date, the actual data does not say what the fucking narrative in the news says. It's just not true, mm -hmm. right? And people who are reasonable are, they, what, what did uh, the King of England said to John Adams one time, John Adams was very frank with him. This is right after the Revolutionary War. And I believe his quote was, an honest man will never have any other, right? Like if you're an honest man, you will not tolerate dishonesty. And people's minds rebel at that idea. And they think if you, it, this is the major problem with the left right now in the media, they've associated this entire problem, which is a socioeconomic problem with a racial uh, theory that does not exist. And people look at the racial theory and like, well, that doesn't exist. So this whole problem doesn't exist, but it's not true. The problem does exist. It's just not because of why these assholes are saying. So the result is people fucking start fighting and nothing ever gets solved. Fuck that shit. The only color that matters in this country is green. I'll say it again. The only color that matters in this fucking country is green. We have to fucking jettison all this shit, wade through these waters, tell people to shut the fuck up and let's actually solve the problem. It's, it seems simple, right? But it don't ever happen. Uh, maybe not. No, it's a fucking pipe it's, dream. It's interesting you're talking about this because especially with this West Virginia, I mean, we actually experience a lot of that here up, oh, up yeah. in Maine. Yep. Where I live, it's a fairly depressed area. And part of the reason is, is manufacturing jobs that were built on the rivers and around the water here have gone overseas. And so people are out of work. They have nothing to do. We've got shoe factories that, that shut down. We've got huge manufacturing facilities and warehouses that are, are, are gone. Like they're, they're there, but they're empty. And, and right. people literally just closed the doors, locked the doors, all the equipment, everything is still inside. And you've got thousands and thousands of people out of work. But, but I'll tell you, uh, I've got a friend up here. His, his name's Pete Roberts with, with origin. He's, he's a partner with Jocko. In fact, mm -hmm. since we were talking about Jocko earlier, and it's going to take guys like. Yeah. Got a little dead air there. Yeah, frozen, frozen in yeah, time. We're trying to solve problems, and the internet's telling us not to. Or is the internet stopping us from solving oh. problems? I think you need to ask yourself that. Um, and I, I, I would end on this image, Georgia, if I were you. You know, cut to a single of it, and then just end on it, because that's what happens when you. Did our internet really just go out? When you, when you make a point, and uh, and wow. then you, you want it all. Is it us though, or them? It's us. Is it really? Yeah, the internet's not working. No. How is that possible here? I don't know with Google fucking fiber. Yeah, fiber. How is it? It's working. It's yeah, not it's working a, for me. It's working on this computer. Yeah, it's working for me too. Not for me. Yeah. yeah. Maybe it's just you guys. Maybe it was your you guys' conversation that just the government is now just shutting down individual people. Well, it wouldn't be the first time that Google's fucked with us. I mean, YouTube censors our shit all the time. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, mm. But I, I just like the point that it froze at, Georgia. Big fan of that. If you're gonna lose a Zoom call, you want you want it like when you're. It's like a powerful moment where you're just like this, not like a tubid moment where it's like ah, uh, my dick's out. You What's know? that called in the biz? A cliffhanger or a, a tubin? A tubin? Okay, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. Called, a, it's <laughs> called a tubin now, but uh, you know, it all depends on how you're frozen. Obviously, that happens. Um, that's one of my favorite things in this life, by the way. I know. What the fuck is going on with this goddamn internet? I I know that I'm. I've, I'm high, obviously, because it's 420, but uh, one of my favorite things is when I pause the TV and whatever weird face it is, if I can catch somebody super hot with like a, a lazy eye or like a, you know, one of the, uh, oh, oh, I usually take a photo of it. I never post it, but I, I guarantee you half the photos on my phone are just that, uh, to be real with you, you know, 
Um, yeah, and that, that happens. That happens. Um, either way, dude, that guy was interesting as shit. Yeah, we could have gone a lot longer than that if we hadn't been sabotaged. Sabotaged by the old Google machine. By our yeah. own. So uh, either way, we can get to the drinking bro of the week, D'Anthony, you know, which is uh, someone who has inspired you or helps you become the person you are today. Again, if you go to drinkingbros.com, all you have to do is uh, put a little submission form in and it comes in live into the inbox as we're on air. And then we just read these live. Whatever happens, happens. Um, sometimes there's a lot. So they might get passed up and feel free to go back. Uh, while you're there at drinkingbros.com, you can also get yourself some butter soft teas. And, uh, you know, those are nice. What are, they, what are they repping for these days? How much was yours? You got a new one on. I don't know. Let me check. Twenty three ninety nine. I can't pull up the fucking internet, so who knows? Uh, uh, T-shirts are 25 bucks. Okay. Yeah, it's not bad at all. Nope. Not bad at all. We got the new ones. And this is a newer color. So we had the lighter gray color in this Drinker Bros one. Yeah. The Pornhub shirt. Yeah. This is a little bit darker color. I think it's, I actually think this one's a little better. Um, another thing we're going to be doing is bundling. So uh, all the APAC stuff, you'll be able to buy in a kit. That's cool. And then all the defund politician stuff, you'll be able to buy in a kit, stuff like that. Hell yeah. Uh, the Drinker Bro of the Week was submitted by Wyatt Perrin from Virginia, a member of Drinking Bros for four years, and he's nominating First Lieutenant Ben Stewart. He says, hey guys, I am nominating one of my best friends, uh, First Lieutenant Ben Stewart of the Virginia Natty Guard. He put Natty in there, which I like, uh, for DB of the Week. I've known Ben for about 11 years, and he's always been a shining example of an American badass, a great leader, and he is an even better friend. He loves hunting, fishing, growing tobacco, drinking whiskey, pushing his body to the absolute limits by taking on any physical challenge just for the hell of it. Sounds like our fucking guest tonight. Uh, unfortunately, over Easter weekend, he was on a road trip when he was in a devastating motorcycle accident. God damn it, man. Mm. I thought that was going all right. And, you then, never know. and then boom, it just took a hard turn there. He miraculously survived, shit. All right. God damn, man. Toying with my emotions. My, I am really going through it here today. Uh, but broke his back and sternum in the process. Jesus. And has a... <laughs> Christ, man. Has been hop hop Bottom line up front, asshole. <laughs> Just... For real, you guys need to start... Damn it, man. Put, like, put whether or not the person's alive <laughs> or not. For fuck's sake. And Shit, this is a whole, a whole gamut of emotions here on this one. Um... <laughs> He's been hospitalized ever since. I'm sorry for laughing at this. That's just, it's, that, this is a windy road. I'm sure if the dude's a fan of the show, he's not going to be a fan No, he'll, he'll understand the dark humor we have here. Uh, he has a very long road of therapy ahead of him, but thankfully doctors have given him a fighting chance to walk again. And that's all a guy like him needs. He is a fighter and he is stubborn as hell. So if anyone can pull through this experience, it's him. He does not listen to the show but I wanted to give him a shout out and ask others to raise a glass for him and his speedy recovery. Uh, did it say where he is? Virginia. Mm. Virginia. The whole story there, right? I thought was going super positive. I thought things were on the up and up. Yeah, this guy should write for Black Mirror. <laughs> what the fuck is wrong with you, dude? Why are you trying to make me feel feelings? I don't appreciate that. And then the motorcycle accident, I was like, oh, shit, he's dead. And then, nope, but he's alive, uh, broken back sternum. He's got a long road to recovery. And then at the end of it, he doesn't listen to the show, mm. but it'd be great if you could raise a glass for him. Well, how's he going to know that we're raising a glass for him? Yeah. You know? Clip it. If he doesn't. Uh, and send it to him. <laughs> listen to the show. Uh, you can submit all your Drinking Bro nominees to drinkingbros.com. Maybe just lead off with this is going to be super dark. Yeah, um, get like good news or bad news. Because they, they really do come in live. Like they just get emailed to us directly on air and that's it. So like we just pop it open and whatever happens, happens there on this one. So uh, whew, I went through it with that whole story, you know? Yeah, it's crazy. Crazy, crazy. Um, check out uh, Ryan's show. It's great. I, you guys uh, recommended him, and, and I know you guys listened to it. Uh, man of Order is the show. It is uh, Order of Man. Order of Man, wherever uh, podcasts are available. And uh, yeah, shit. Let's get fucking weird tonight, Dan. Mm -hmm. You know, 420. 
420. For D'Anthony D'Anthony Holloway, I am Ross Patterson. We are the Drinking Bros. Good night, everyone.